84-year-old Hartland Goodtrack is one of the last fluent speakers of the Lakota language. He grew up at Wood Mountain Lakota First Nation, the only Lakota community in Canada. Goodtrack's mother gave birth to him in 1938 at his grandparents' home. His grandmother delivered him and raised him. My grandfather was telling me uh, how it happened. He was outside working with his horses. And she carried the baby to him and she said, Wanka Hokshila Lacha Ichak Uyinaha Ichakiha Wachiwinikte. That means, <clears throat> look, it's a little boy. We're going to keep him and we're going to raise him, and when he grows up, he'll look after us. The Wood Mountain Lakota First Nation members are the descendants of the Sitting Bull tribe, a proud history that Good Track learned about along with his language. I didn't go to school till I was 80 years old. They finally got me a horse to ride to school. And uh, that's how I learned to uh, speak English. Good Track and his wife Evelyn have been married for 54 years. She doesn't speak Lakota. And he regrets not teaching his daughters the language. He says there are a few people left who can speak it. But it was completely lost. Since the old elders died, uh, they're gone the uh, last 30 years, 30, 40 years. One time uh, you, go in a, you go any place in a reserve, everybody was talking to Lakota. A few years ago, Good Track was asked by the File Hills Copel Tribal Council to help with this Lakota app. His daughter, Roberta, so it was day, has also found online classes. In terms of language revitalization for myself and for my children and grandchildren, I am, I've immersed myself in, in learning online, through online languages with the University of uh, Minnesota. And it's free and it's accessible to anyone around the world. Shaw is red, To is blue, Z is yellow. Like her father, She's worried the language will be lost. It's sad, right? And so you want to give him exposure and for him to share his knowledge about the language. So every language has a spirit. And that's a, the first thing we learn, right? It's, it's the spirit of the language and it has to, it's the sacredness of the language and that we have to embrace that. And so you learn it with prayer as well. And I truly believe that prayer and language go hand in hand. So she's trying to learn it and her father appreciates the effort. I hate to leave it uh, behind when I'm gone. Somebody should, some of my grandchildren should learn. He has hopes his daughters and grandchildren will carry on the Lakota language. Louise Begigal, CBC News, Standing Buffalo, Dakota Nation.